started. We've waited the, I think, obligatory three minutes after for finishing time. So it's our second, I guess, off campus speaker so far. So that's exciting for us post COVID. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mergen Jankovic. He's a senior technical leader at Ford. He's off campus, but technically local, which is good. Uh, he's had a, you know, kind of a long, illustrious career, so I won't spend too much time going over all his awards, but he's a IEEE fellow. He's also a member of the NAE, uh, more than 90 patents, if I remember correctly, over 140 papers, so just a really great mix of both and a, a theory to practice. So he's got a provocative header, so title, so I'll, I'll let him get started. Thank you. Uh, let me just say that I'm really glad to be here after the COVID. Uh, maybe this is second second guest uh, speaker, whatever live speaker here uh, externally. But this is first time for me to be speaking in front of the live live audience in at least three years, roughly three years. So uh, let me just say that I, I have to acknowledge a number of people from Ford, Mario and Mike, Yusuf, Jan, and Noah. Uh, I have I have learned a lot of collaborating with people. Right and here, it is uh, Jesse, Pete, and. and Mitra, and as well as people from Caltech, UCSD, uh, and University of Kentucky, and this, this, these are the people I collaborated on specifically multi-agency type of stuff, control variable function, etc. So the question is, why would I want the multi-agent system unstable? Uh, it's a rhetorical question. So unstable feedback loop, right? Is this what we want, really? Never, never in my career, and I, I can see I have had a long career anyone ask me to design an unstable system, right? So I make the system unstable, please. No, no, not even for this one. However, this positive feedback and instability may turn out to be the key ingredients in how these robots uh, or, or vehicles or computers you want are negotiating. Right? How do you get independent agents to decide who goes first to a merge point or intersection or in any way? Talking more about you know, broader context, right? Biology economy, they have a constant positive feedback, right? There are positive feedback are prevalent in many, many of these negative feedbacks too, right? Um, in the engineering, positive feedback systems are not as widely utilized. So this is according to it, well, you can say that uh, nuclear chain reaction is a positive feedback. We try to tame it, of course. We sometimes people design unstable system, but then use controls to stabilize it. Here, we have a stable system, and we want to design something to destabilize, which is very interesting kind of change on this. So, what does it mean? I, I have multi-agency. I have vehicles or robots, right? And I want them to move fluidly without gridlock through any. You know, narrow point, you know, the decide which one goes first, which one goes second, third, fifth, whatever. Um, so what does it take, right? Um, many of the algorithms treat other others not as agents, not independent agents, but moving obstacles. So if you read papers, they say, oh, here is a moving vehicle and I have to avoid it. Initially, we thought that this would determine lack of liveness. Right? So if you do this, right, then you don't expect, but it wasn't really the case. Uh, also, liveness was not correlated, and we tried this with co-optimization. Co-optimization basically means uh, the agent pretends to have a centralized control over everyone, computes for everyone, but implements itself. Uh, so what, what did we found out? We, we have control, we use looks at, at control barrier function, you'll see why. And uh, we determined that liveness actually correlate with uh, stability of the inter-agent loop. Namely, if, if gridless is possible, a stable inter-agent loop is, uh, the inter-agent loop is, is stable. Gridlock highly unlikely, basically, you're not gonna find it if the, feedback loop is unstable. And faster instability means more graceful passing or merging. So the faster you, you diverge from the gridlock point, the easier the, the merge looks. Obviously, I can conjecture the whole thing applies to other ones. However, however, and I'm going to make that this case in two slides, I think. Uh, you have the all the other ones in general are non-convex. As such, they result in a discontinuous controller. Uh, 
uh, proving that this continuous controller is stable or unstable if the instability happens exactly at the critical places very difficult because you know you cannot linearize and say oh yeah i see unstable positive eigenvalue it's unstable if it is discontinuous i don't know what to do at this point in time so here is the structure of the talk right um i'm gonna say just a word about computational com complexity i'm trying to get a lot of work that has been done in one slide <laughs> so you're going to see that slide next then I'm going to talk uh, in much more detail about control barrier functions. I think they have a lot of merit. I actually have a vehicle experiment with control barrier function, but it's not multi-agent vehicle experiment. The, the other agents are chairs, so they are not reacting <laughs> at all. Uh, then I'm going to talk about holonomic robots and some and some uh, findings that prompted this work. Stability analysis is next, and the and the. At the end, I'm going to illustrate. I try to illustrate the findings, how what this means for a more complex, maybe uh, more relevant examples um, or in simulations. So, why CBFs? Well, uh, short answer is convex optimization. We like convex optimization. It's computationally efficient. Uh, in fact, I can cite uh, here Rockefeller. I said the great watershed optimization isn't between linearity and linearity, but convexity and non-convexity. Convexity easy, not convexity hard. Convexity, well, not guaranteed, but often continuous, non-convexity, not always, but often discontinuous. Uh, so the scaling, if you look at, if I have a convex program, the number of agencies in A, like could be, you're all gonna see five, but could be 10. Could be 32 actually i have to be to try 32 agents you can solve it it's easy to solve it. Um, scaling is linearly they are decentralized if they only optimize their own they only look at their own control input they're easy linear if you go with centralized or co-optimization and those that pretend to be centralized but are not they scale theoretically as a number of agents about to the power four but in reality you observe like number of agents squared and you can do it in, this comes from the experiments University of Kentucky, where they actually have human in the loop, surrounded by 32 agents, computed in real time, because there's human in loop, right? You cannot, cannot take three days to compute 32 agents moving around, right? There is human in real time, moving the joystick, moving its own robot. Um, complexity alternatives, well, in general, it's not good, right? Non-convex optimization, NP-hard. NP-hard means we don't have a polynomial algorithm that does it. Uh, you don't know how to do it in polynomial time, you know, polynomial number of operations. Uh, NPC with the messenger program, NP-hard. The four vehicle intersection that I'm gonna show at the end, we couldn't do after eight hours in some of these cases, uh, the solar F eight hours of crunching, couldn't find a single feasible solution of the, of the problem. Of course, it was brute force, and uh, you know, mixing the program in that case was brute force, meaning, uh, well, you you don't try to find some smart heuristics to to, to do this. Obviously, there uh, number of these could be improved with some heuristics, right? With something I say, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ignore this. I'm gonna not include that. They always leave some gaps, which probably are is okay, but may not be, it's difficult to say if it was. You're gonna see the complexity, how, how, uh, how things get complex uh, towards the end, of course, of the talk. Um, game theory, Nash games uh, are MP hard. Uh, stack looking bear game, the only thing here you that CP is, if you can establish a leader and follower, that's polynomial scaling. Uh, discrete search often used in automotive example. Discrete search, I, I put exponential. Basically, you put the grid, discretize your space, and uh, and then check all the options and say, okay, this is the one I like the, the most. Well, you can do it for yourself. Then you say, oh, other agent, it's the third agent. I have 100 options, let's say. Let me check all 100. Then the next one, well, that's 10,000. The next one, that's a million. Fifth and sixth, well, you can see 32 agents. I think that's probably more than the number of atoms in, in the universe. It's essentially infinite. 
number of options. Um, Markov decision process also in Bihar. There is reinforcement learning, which theoretically, of course, is based on Markov decision pro problems, and it's theoretically in Bihar. But we are hoping that the space we are interested in is much, much smaller, and we are going to actually only look at that piece of, of the space that is of interest, always leaving a possibility that we miss something, and there is an edge case that has been missed, but I, there is a hope. So as I said, I compressed a lot of things into this slide. You can read, right? There are review articles. The last one, I think, has 100 something pages. So really, you read that, you say, wow. Anyway, so I, I'm, I'm not going to talk much more about, about uh, going into this because you know, this space uh, of NP hard systems, I think, because it's, it's just it's too much. And as it's, it is NP hard, I'm, I'm going to mention things along the way. So control barrier functions. Uh, you can see here, I have a dynamical system. Uh, it is uh, affine in the control U. That's important. So nonlinear is fine. Affine in the co control input is, is uh, important. Admissible set is defined by some function being uh, uh, greater than zero. I have here an example of the function could be elevation above sea level, right? right? If it is, if this is a, a lake or a sea, right? I want, I want my elevation. However, I move this robot or whatever, uh, well, whatever I'm moving around, I want the elevation to be positive. I don't want this uh, my equipment to get wet, right? So this H is the control barrier function. If the first equation says I can find the control U in my set of allowed allow, allowed controls, such that this H dot plus lambda H is greater than zero. What this means really is if I'm approaching an obstacle. I can approach really fast if, I, if I'm far away. So age of could, could decrease quite fast if I'm far away. But as I come closer, I have to slow down because I cannot, you know, age of plus lambda h has to be greater than zero. So if, as h goes towards zero, this becomes zero. So if I'm on the boundary, age of is zero. I, I'm not gonna cross, right? That's pretty much it. And the se second one is just, uh, rephrasing this, if your control, if your U is, uh, uh, you know, the, the RM is, it's if your your U is not effectively not trained, the, the, you get the second one, which is sometimes easier to check. By the way, the definition control barrier function comes from Willan and Algebra. So, what what does this mean for us? It means if there is a CBF, then I can find control U such this is I can rewrite it. This is just chain rule, right? And this is why this is why uh, it's important that, that the system be affine and control U. I get the linear constraint. This is this affine and control constraint. This is convex. And then the second one says basically uh, if if I satisfy this then h of t is greater than this h of zero e to the minus lambda t. If I start with positive h of zero, then I stay positive. I'm not gonna get my equipment back, basically. That's what it says. Uh, CBF as a safety filter. This is the simplest version to use a CBF. Somehow you find a different control, uh, maybe computed with, without taking into account the constraint, right? So. There are no obstacles, for example, and you say, oh, you want to get there, just go there, right? And start going there. And then obviously that's control may not be good if you have a constraint. So you put this as a constraint and you get a quadratic program. So you said, find the control U, which is the closest to the one you want that satisfies this constraint. And this comes from uh, this idea, I think first time CDC 2014. Uh, so this is the this is the, the setup that you're gonna see over. I mean, this, this is basically it. Uh, you can see it's conceptually simple. Constraints, convex, quadratic, it's actually a quadratic program. That's 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 it, which I often call QP in the rest of the presentation. There are no tuning parameters. I mean, if I assume lambda comes with with h, if lambda doesn't come with h, and I can 
uh, tune lambda, then I can I can do that. But then I so I have one parameter. Otherwise, if lambda is prepackaged, then this is it. Uh, and then if H is CDF, this problem is feasible. I can solve. The resulting control is Lipschitz continuous. That's really nice. Right? Uh, meaning existence, uniqueness, whatever, but more than that, actually, for us. It guarantees that H of X stays positive for all T. Local stabilization properties are inherited from U0. And it's a mild assumption that, that your local is not on the boundary of the of the missile set and this type of thing. So if you move away, you, you, you are okay. Uh, so, well, our control needs to be robust, right? Uh, here it is H of X boundary of C on the left, I'm safe, right? H is positive on the right, I'm unsafe. What if I have uncertainties? What if I have a disturbance? How do I know? I'm, I'm allowing this thing to come to the boundary uh, slower and slower, but there is a gust of wind pushing me. How do I know? So one way to handle this is, well, I'm going to shift this down a little bit, move the boundary in, and enforce a different one. Right? So you can see, once you get to the boundary of the original set, there is a restoring force pushing you back out. And in, uh, on, the, on the left side of this new boundary, you are enforcing this new uh, boundary of C eta as the, as the uh, what you want to enforce. That's basically, uh, well, size of my physical set is reduced. If, if, in, if the other side, the admissible set, if is inadmissible set, it, our obstacles, my obstacles got bigger right? by this, uh, Barrier margin. In return, the uh, the barrier constraint. No, no, that's, that's what I said. Uh, the, the, you have the restoring force. So, robust control barrier functions. This is different from uh, view to robust. Previous, I said, well, I don't know what the what the disturbances or certainly are. I'm just gonna move away from the my obstacle got big. Right? That's it. Here I have more structure to it. I have bounded disturbance, so I have this nonlinear system. The service is bounded. Basically, the first equation says H is robust CBF if basically the same thing holds with the worst case disturbance I could I could have. That's it. Uh, now, if you have this, then you have a QP. The first one, I know nothing about the disturbance, right? I, I have no idea what the disturbance is. So I could, I have to use the worst case. So I satisfy this. The second one I have known, I have my disturbance is known. And I say, well, I know what the disturbance, I'm measuring wind, for example. I, I, I know what wind is. Or or my my road is I have I have a grade, right? So I know what the grade is here. So I this is disturbance, and I, I'm gonna put that disturbance. There. This is going to play a major role in our work, not in this way I'm just describing, actually much trickier than that. So how easy it is to generate barrier functions? Well, not too difficult in general. Uh, we, as I said, we only have one tuning parameter potentially, which I call barrier bandwidth, for obvious reasons, right? Uh, and, and treating of convex, con non-convex obstacles is the same. So. Here is the example. You have a Roomba robot. You don't want it to hit the wall or a leg of a table, for example. Uh, that's not my arrow. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see. Okay. Um, so, so what you do, you say, okay, move this uh, wall. Uh, in by, by the radius of, of Roomba robot. So I don't have a margin, but obviously you move more if you want margin. There is a line there that describes this. There is the equation of the line, and here is the uh, equation of the, of the barrier function. That's it. The same thing with a, with a uh, cylinder, when going to the table, you have square distance between these is larger than, uh, some of the radia. This, uh, the wall is convex, the chair is non-convex, there is no difference in the 
when you write the, the equations, there is no difference. Uh, in this case, most likely your control is not going to be, let's say, velocity, but acceleration, for example. Uh, so your control doesn't appear in h dot. So far, it did. But it's going to appear h double dot. Well, you use second order barrier uh, equation. There are some conditions, but basically, this is this is the this is it. Uh, so here we have, as I promised you, some chairs and, and a vehicle. Uh, the waypoints you can see up in the in the left corner there are waypoints, uh, and there are no chairs, so that there is path planning that says, okay, move, follow from one to the next waypoint. Uh, Pure pursuit is, is done to, to connect these, unaware of the obstacles. There is a CBF-based obstacle avoidance with onboard sensing. So there is a sensing on board, says, okay, there, are, there is something in front of me and tries to avoid it. Uh, and uh, it overrides both steering and braking, so you can see how it works. Uh, by the way, the aspect ratio of my video is very different with this one of, of what I'm looking <laughs> here. So, so this, this is a fusion vehicle that looks like very narrow here. I don't know why. So and anyway, that's okay. Just keep in mind this, the circles you are going to see later are circles, not the lips. <laughs> okay, so this was chairs, right? Now I said, okay, well. I, I mean, I have other agents. There are other people doing. Take a look at this one. This is this is in Paris, right? So, I mean, uh, time planning, you know, prediction <laughs> what others are gonna do three seconds from now. There is nothing, right? It's it's the rules are move forward if you can, don't hit anything. <laughs> right? This this is right. This is it. Move forward if you can, but don't don't hit any. That's that's. These are the simple rules. No right away. I didn't see any right away. It's just try. And this traffic moves sometimes. Well, that doesn't uh, work so well. You can see gridlock, right? Uh, let's do. Um, so even though we are very good at driving, we are not perfect. <laughs> and, and if you think that we have a central controller that can handle this, I don't think so. Which country was that? Which country was that? <laughs> I, I would say somewhere in Asia, judging by the, by the letters, but uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it could happen. I mean, I, I mean, it could happen anywhere. It's, it's not uh, Asia specific. Uh, so, avoiding directing obstacles. A lot of work has been done in robotics literature. Um, here we have, I have just three cases are ORCA, optimal reciprocal collision avoidance that uses these velocity cones, splits responsibility uh, for collision avoidance between two agents. There is no accounting for third party constraints. So, so it is uh, me and the other guy. If the other guy is going to get hit by someone else, I don't know about that. That's, that's the system, right? Uh, we call it decentralized reciprocal. You'll see in a moment why. They're interacting Gaussian processes. So you have this, this robot frozen road problem, right? If you want to plan your path between these pedestrians, right, that come toward you and put some uncertainty cones, what they are going to do, there is no path. You have to start moving to create a path for yourself. Otherwise, there is no path. Keep that, keep that in mind. Unless you start moving, there is no path. And, and so they, they do. Uh, they, they, they do assume the destination of everyone is known and then do stochastic optimization for everyone. And I call this call optimization, you'll see later what it is. And then there are CBF based results, right? Uh, uh, you know, I think are robots. Uh, and you, you can you have a couple of papers on that and you, you know, they consider centralized, decentralized follower, decentralized reciprocal. By the way, this call optimization is centralized reciprocal. In fact, these are our terms, not theirs. It's centralized these days. But these are these are our, how we call them to distinguish the algorithms in some way. So what they did and what we did too 
here is agents are disks uh, with radius r. It's simple. Uh, uh, second order in X and Y, simple dynamics, right? Uh, there is a radius margin uh, distance based CBF, right? Quadratic distance greater than uh, some of the radii square, including the, the margin. Uh, if you take the second order derivative, you get the, this is the form Aij plus Bij Ui minus Uj. Remember that this is going to appear often. This is, this is, this is what we are trying to actually work with. And then the uh, number of constraints grows as the number of agents squared. Then centralized multi-agent controllers. So I have the, uh, <coughs> I have to move faster. No. Okay, the centralized controller, no communication protocol. Each agent computes its own best action. Uh, no co-optimization, no, nothing for the other ones. This is how it looks. Uh, it has only its own control. Assumes the other one is not going to do anything. Right? The other one uses no acceleration. It's going to keep moving at the same speed, the same direction as before. Uh, the It cannot guarantee collision. You can see collision here. It, interestingly, if you take only half of the responsibility, it's actually better. So half of the responsibility is better than full responsibility. Uh, however, this one can also apply because this blue coming in is not aware that the magenta is not going to move, uh, taking half of its own responsibility for avoiding collision, collision because it cannot. There is a red one coming from the other side. So that's how they collide. But so the only difference is one half, right, between the two. This one, this one can be the one on the left can be. Can collide even without infeasibility. This one collides only if it is infeasible. Centralized controller, you can imagine what it is, right? I know everything, I control everyone. There is so so it has all controls at this disposal, right? Everyone, you can control everyone. Uh, and one can show that actually it's feasible. And the one jointly feasible action not optimal, just feasible, is proportional breaking, which is really nice. You say everyone breaks proportionally and they are not gonna collide. The constant of proportionality has to be one of the, of the uh, characteristic values of that H double dot L1 H L plus L0 H uh, equals zero equation. So, so from there you get characteristic values, they have to agree which one, so they cannot, use different ones, they have to agree and say, okay, this one, but they don't have to agree here because they, they there, is, there is one entity computing everything. Co-optimization, if you go to Tesla AI day here and, and look what was said, this is original, not the new one, though it was confirmed in the new one. Uh, it says, you need to plan for ourselves and everyone else jointly. So they, they say, I'm, we are going to plan for everyone. We call this co-optimization, meaning I'm pretending I'm centralized and I'm controlling everyone. Obviously, you don't control the other guy. You don't even know what the other guy is going to do. But hey, I can, I can pretend I'm, I'm doing that. Tesla used discrete search for joint plan, planning, which could be discontinuous, as, as I may have said before. And it's a it scales exponential. So our version on the on the with control barrier function is given here after change of coordinates. I don't know what u zero j are, what others are want to do in this case. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say u zero, just like the centralized use. Other ones want want to don't want to do anything. But in in this case, I'm actually using other ones. You can see here. So maybe I'm not, I'm not going to move this. I, I'm using this uh, other controls to avoid obstacles, to help me avoid obstacles. So it's always feasible. You can see the, the structure of this. I compute for agent one, I compute for agent two, but that, that will go over. I'm not doing anything with this. Uh, <clears throat> predictor corrector. So this is our version. This may be our contribution to this space. 
we use RCBFs. So this is the RCBF setup. Wherever the other agent controls come in, I said, I have a disturbance. I could have said the worst case disturbance is something and I can account for this. It's going to be conservative. But we say it's a known disturbance. So I know what it is. How do I know what it is? Well, I know what just happened. A previous step, I, I computed, you see, I computed what the others should do. I observe what it did. I take the difference. I feed it back as a disturbance, creating yet another feedback loop on top of everything. Uh, I need I need a unit delay or or filter to break the algebra. This creates an algebraic loop, actually, many more than one algebraic loop. But that's that's how it goes. <coughs> oh yeah. Okay. So feasibility, and these are the properties established mostly for two-way feasibility. Uh, actually, applies for a number of agents. Unique solution exists. W states remain bounded if the input A, J, K, and so on, right? Uh, okay, here's now it's not perfect. I said before, H of T greater than zero. This is now greater than O of delta T. So I can make it arbitrarily small by sampling fast or filtering fast. The robustness, if one agent uses PCCA, and thinks the other one is also using PC, but it's not. The other one is not interacting. You get the same error because if the other one is not cooperating, you are going to adjust to that. Every time this this loop goes in, you say, "Oh, this one didn't do anything." Then you split responsibility between the two. Then the next time you say, "Didn't do anything," split responsibility. But now you have already assumed more and more responsibility. So, so you are also going to get this whole delta t if you sample fast and obviously have good sensing for that. So Monte Carlo simulations, uh, well, you have seen about five or six of these, right? Various ones, so you can compare, right? The centralized, the centralized flow, the centralized reciprocal, complete control set, PCCA with sample day, PCCA with low pass filter. We, what we do, we said initial final conditions are random. We use LQR to for u zero, right? So I'll just tell you, just go from this point to that point. Assume there is no one there, and then you you actually uh, turn on. Except for centralized, other one had no other agent intent or destination available. So so they use only what is observed. Um, so here is uh, how it may look. This is PCCA, by the way. Choppiness is uh, the video playback. It's not in there. If I did not, if it wasn't on Zoom, it wouldn't be choppy. Uh, so it's playback, not the actual uh, problem with the video, with, with the algorithm. So, uh, that's yes. a quick question. Uh, you say uh, they just observe quantities, but, 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 but are the things they can observe at runtime? Positions, velocities. <laughs> if you what, what we did, for example, with the low pass filter, we didn't put low, low pass filter on acceleration, we put uh, approximate differentiator on the velocity, S over tau as possible. Yes. And U is something they like, the accelerations, they infer it if they want to feed that back. I assume you are referring to. In PCCA, you are, you were like, yeah. These U's are accelerations, mm -hmm. but it's, and this, this with Z1, with really, previous version of Z, you assume you know it. If you use a filter, it's actually filter velocity. Filter differentiated velocity, S over tau S plus one on the velocity. That's what we did. Is that what you asked? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so this one. Okay, the results. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, right now, you can see the greens are the best, red, reds are the worst. You can see infeasibility, decentralized are often infeasible. The other ones, as I said, are always feasible, which is good. Uh, the small eight min uh, uh, violations centralizes because of the finite sampling, sampling time. We sample at 50 milliseconds. If you increase the sampling rate, it goes down or disappears. The other ones are all of delta T. 
if you're sampling, it goes down. But it's easy to take care of with a barrier margin. This is without mark, any margin. Take a look, and uh, what I want to talk about is gridlocks, right? Number of gridlocks versus co-optimization and decentralized. You see, they don't co-optimization does not buy you absence of gridlocks. The fact that I take everyone's input into account doesn't buy me much. Um, buys me a little bit faster convergence time. But other than that, there are still gridlocks. And how it looks really, you can see here when the tree on the bottom, green, bluish, they are central and PCCA, they are fairly consistent and the other ones have some a wide variation. Again, if you add radius margin, you can drive infringement uh, out, but liveness deteriorates for those that do uh, uh, have sorry, uh, uh, infringement. Noticeable gridlock resolution or deadlock in the literature. In CBF, there are a couple of papers in general consists of uh, detecting the deadlock and then uh, execute a prescribed, uh, uh, I call it well choreographed. I didn't have the video, but it, there is in the Grover paper, there is there are actual links to videos. They go from the initial stop for a second or two, rotate by 180, and then go to, to their own direction. Very, very uh, well choreographed, uh, which is fine. Centralized policy, no one ever thought to do uh, <laughs> deadlock resolution because they never saw them that. But why, why does centralized ever that or what, what, what is it? So here is comparison to give you an idea where I'm going. On the left side is the decentralized, which, which is going to gridlock. You can see on the right side is PCCA, which is not. In symmetric case, we did just a little bit of offset for the for the magenta, for the one in the middle. They go across, right? So they from minus 10 to 10, 10 to minus 10. Uh, this is decentralized follower. Uh, you can see it moving slowly but surely. You add noise, nothing happens. This is a stable configuration. This thing is fairly stable. And eventually when they stop, a deadlock resolution could rotate them and that go, they go their own way. This is PCCA, same initial condition. It's unstable, right? I look at this and said, this thing is unstable. Well, my problem is one on the left has 12 states, one on the right has 24 states. Uh, half of them in the controller half for this. You cannot even write those matrices to, to analyze. I have no idea how to do it. So, simple problem. I have this intersection. I have two agents going into the intersection, right? They have to decide which one goes first. They only have that this is narrow thing, so they can only, they, they, there is no, no, uh, no point in uh, steering, obviously. You can. You can either go first or you go second. Uh, X10 initial conditions are less than zero, velocities are controls, and, and uh, V10, V20, and the desired speed are constant. There is a barrier function, is, is distance as before. Uh, and I, I argue that this is the same thing as a merge. One of these two is just geometry is different, but there is no steering as a useful option. One has to go first through the merge point, the other second. I can put the, some geometry and cosine theta, but basically that's the same thing, right? Um, and again, if I, if I add, consider acceleration, I add a state because all my consideration really is when the constraints are active. So I'm gonna add a state from H dot, but you're gonna see that, you're gonna see lambda that shows up in the CBF constraints there for in, the, in, the, in all of these. I'm gonna do, Decentralized reciprocal, maybe just in a little bit of, of detail and later fly through the rest. Uh, minimum of VI now, velocity as before. I have reciprocal, but the uh, decentralized uh, <coughs> follower is basically the same because this one half gets subsumed into, into lambda. So it's just a different parameter, nothing else. I can solve it, that's a good thing, right? 
this guarantees collision avoidance and there can be no infeasibility here. Uh, if you, you this is the, this is the when both constraints are active and I need them both to be active because if I'm looking at a, at a gridlock, uh, they are not going to gridlock if one is inactive because if it is inactive, it's just flying at their prescribed velocity, uh, right? V one zero. If, if it is inactive, V one zero, it just goes. So it's not going to stop if it is inactive. The question is, what happens if you when you activate it? Well, I'm saying when you activate it. You satisfy as you expect h dot equals minus lambda h. Right? This is this is my I can see my area constraints in there. I can also have one more thing. X1 and x2 are positive are negative numbers. So x1 dot and x2 dot, if h is positive number, x1 dot and x2 dots are are always positive. So they always go forward. What does that mean? Well. It means once I enter into the gray, gray uh, shaded region, right, I'm stuck there because they don't go backward. They never go back. This is this is it. The, the, the bunch of equilibria, you can see that my equilibrium is defined by h equals zero. Uh, they are all stable because to be unstable, I have to move along the arc, but I can't because they don't go back. One side, one side. Uh, and of course, if you linearize, you get eigenvalue zero and, and the minus lambda you see there. So how does it look in simulation? Here is uh, we have gridlock for a symmetry less than uh, 0 0.24 meters. This is just outside of that, so you can see how how it performs just outside of the gridlock region. This slows down. And you could see if the blue were just ahead a little bit, uh, they would have been gridlocked. If if you do the sweep, this is how it looks. Uh, these are all gridlocks down there. But surprisingly, you can see a surprise. Everything else is pretty fast. If you don't gridlock, it's not bad. But fifteen percent, this fifteen uh, percent of the initial condition in this test are going to gridlock. So here is quickly centralized, right? Centralized control everything. You are not surprised. There is an unstable eigenvalue. You linearize. You you get a single equilibrium point. We can see there, and it's unstable. I I have PCCA unstable equilibrium point. Uh, this is this is not point. This is actually one D manifold because this is fourth order system now. You can see four eigenvalues. One uh, D manifold equilibrium is unstable. Zero eigenvalue, the one that would actually be stable, moved from the physical space to the controller space. These two co corresponds to the controller space, zero and minus one on tau. Uh, the other two are physical space. After change of this is this is this you, you can see after change of area. By the way, I don't know if I said. This is in the July uh, Archip paper, so you can look it up. I'm the first co-author, so so you go there in Archip July 2022, and you can see the, all the details here. Uh, some surprising thing: the faster agents want to go, the stability. Isn't it good? You are lucky, right? I go fast, and the other one goes fast, and then. Instability is faster than if I go slow. Um, the larger the lambda, the less time to diverge. Now this one is I'm going to make some some points out of this. If you have uh, if you have less time, they are going to look more congested in the congested situations. Uh, you're going to see more about this later. PCCA, this is the same one you just saw. You're going to see this is about I don't know, 40, 50% faster than the other one. Uh, really nice. Uh, they don't come close. They, remember, the other ones came close, and this is the same initial condition. PC centralized, practically the same. I mean, in this particular set of examples, they are almost indistinguishable. You can see here. Uh, Nothing, and then some very close to the stable manifold, 
And then one hits the same. This is completely symmetric case. I know if it's on the same line, it's completely symmetric. It takes that to actually gridlock. If you are not hitting the completely symmetric case, it's not gonna, and you can see everything else clears. Um, one gridlock in 60,000 runs here. Um, <clears throat> to make things more interesting, I guess, before I run out of time. Uh, I'm gonna look at another algorithm. This is the centralized follower, but I'm gonna add uh, estimate of the other vehicle action into my algorithm. So now I'm not assuming the other one is not gonna do anything. I'm, I'm saying whatever they did before is gonna keep doing. So if it, let's say in this case is velocity, but if it was accelerating before it will keep accelerating. So it's a little bit different flavor. Uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do, it doesn't say, oh yeah, it does. Actually, I'm gonna use the filter. I have to, again, I would have a, a static loop if I don't do this. So I, I put the filter there. So this V hat is actually filtered. Whatever I observe again, uh, could be approximate differentiation of the position if you want. That's what I did, I think. Here is the matrix, unstable pair of zero eigenvalues. I have a Jordan block. Uh, again, the physical state is unstable. The stable one is in the controller, which is really nice. So how does it compare to the decentralized? They're both decentralized. They both compute the control only for itself. Decentralized reciprocal uh, passes, okay. Right. Again, it's just outside of the gridlock zone. This one, uh, but take a look, careful look at the initial conditions. The red one is closer. Uh, first thing, second out. But it does go backward. So, so actually, it's not going to gridlock. I mean, these things are because it's slow. My, my instability is, is not exponential, but proportional to time, which is much slower than exponential. So if I continue, if it continued, let it run longer, it will actually get, get uh, farther out, but it's slower. So the summary of all of this is <clears throat> I have these properties of the algorithms, uh, unstable, fast means zero gridlock, unstable, slow, even that I got zero gridlock. And if it is stable, I got gridlocks, right? Easy to correlate. Important thing to, uh, to notice is I don't actually know how to design uh, an unstable uh, system. This is hindsight. I have the algorithm, I check what it does, I run the analysis on the simple example. I said, aha, yeah, this one's stable, this one is unstable. If you ask me before I did this, which one is, if you come with the next one and say, is this one? I don't know. Okay, uh, let me do this one and then I'm gonna move quicker through the rest. Uh, okay, keep this in mind, non-convex optimization methods. So not all, all the instability is undesirable. Non-convex give you this often discontinuous stuff, right? Not only is difficult, cute, it could be discontinuous. It, very difficult to predict what the other is, a guy is going to do if it's flip flopping. So you can see the dynamic window algorithm. Um, they crash. Humans do that too. <laughs> Breaking was available to both all along. All along. <laughs> Uh, this is this is what you say. So I'm going to skip this one because I want to get to the finale of this. Is this is the DF plus V hat, but in this case it's A hat. So you know acceleration. You can see zero zero gridlocks. Now uh, let me run this. Uh, you remember first in second out. Uh, sometimes that doesn't work so well in the in the simulations. Take a look at this. They are totally lost. Eventually, they get it, but but they they go one way, and the, so I think this is first thing, second out property that you can see. Okay, uh, now finale of the talk, right? Intersection. 
no communication, no right of way, no intent prediction, no future trajectory. We, no one knows what the other ones are going to do. We are running either BF on TCC, LQR, FreeDU0, bicycle model kinematics covered by elliptical uh, CBFs, as you can see here. Uh, well, there are constraints uh, to satisfy radius margin, sampling time 50. This one is, so I have four vehicles, two are going to go straight, two are going to turn. Fully symmetric, initial conditions are what they want to do, right? It's seven miles per second initial speed, that's what they want actually to maintain. Uh, 26 meters initial distance for all of them. Decentralized follower, and we're not surprised that it's critical, right? You knew this would happen as soon as I probably put the centralized follower there. You knew this is what, what's going to happen. Now, it, this is interesting part. You know that PCC is going to pass, right? But it's interesting on the left is a slower barrier bandwidth. On the right is higher barrier, barrier bandwidth, right? You can see lambdas 1.2 and move to double that. This is the, 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 the dominant mode of this. Again, everything else the same. Take a look. Slow one clears nicely. This is really easy, right? Nothing, nothing about this. Exponential instability, right? Small differences over some seconds. Well, they pass easily. This one is starts to break too late. They're too aggressive, right? Eventually, they're gonna they're gonna do it. Um, and what I want to say is. How do I explain this? Remember, unstable eigenvalue is independent of lambda. It depends on the speed they want to go with and, and the size of these things. But lambda was not a factor there. The smaller the lambda, the earlier I activate, the more time I have to diverge. So it's not true always, right? Because if they were passing, you know, whatever, they're passing and they start breaking because lambda is, is too small, they will slow down unnecessarily if they were passing. But if it is congested, then they have more time to diverge. By the way, lower band, you can even see that this didn't help BF at all. And finally, the summary, these multi-agent systems are very complex. By the way, the, the, the intersection, the order is 40, this is it, it's 40th order. Uh, so it's, I don't know, huge order of the system, right? Analyzing this would be a nightmare. But obviously you have the smaller things to learn what happens. Uh, central and co-optimization control may suffer for computational scaling issues if you have a, uh, a large scale problem. Uh, computing is different, but convex stuff is, is okay. Uh, CDF provide an efficient way to handle some of these problems. And the main reason why it's so nice is, well, if your prediction uh, and planning is less valuable, I'm, I'm just like that Paris example, I'm, I'm down to my immediate reaction, go forward, but don't hit anything, right? The planning 10 seconds in the future is, is useless. You have no idea what's gonna happen. If you remember anything from the talk, I think three things in blue. Instability seems essential to avoiding gridlocks. We don't know how to create gridlocks in the in the joint space. Parameter selection played no role. I, it's not the parameters. Every every case is regardless of the parameters. I just stable or unstable. Algorithm is I just stable or unstable. No matter what parameters few I as as I as I have uh, is picked. And finally, the question is: Do humans do this? So think about this. If the guys crashing in that video actually slow down, they will get time to diverge. So maybe our slowing down in the congested space actually not for safety, but to buy you time to diverge. Anyway, that's that's the problem. There are a few questions. I'm sure we have some of the. Uh, yeah, so you say that instability seems essential, but assuming that we turn the intersection into a roundabout, right? Mm -hmm. And then by having a, a simple rule of right of way, right. Uh, crash can be avoided. 
true. So, and it's decentralized. They just need to observe right hand side, left hand side, who has yes, the right yes, of way and so yes. forth. Right? If, you, if you turn it in a roundabout. Yeah. In this particular case, one right hand rule would not help you much because it's full symmetric. They are coming from four sides at the same time. So well, everyone you, you just change the geometry. Everyone has someone on the on the on the right of that, right? Uh, but I, I agree if you if you put it in the roundabout and right away, you can handle it. There is some there is some a little bit of a uh, complication in the sense I cannot run the algorithm, I have a right away, so I'm going. There is something called a duty of care. That thing does not satisfy duty of care. I cannot run an algorithm that ignores what the other one is doing. I have to have maybe the last moment action. I have if the other one is gonna go in front, I think it's gonna go in front of me, breaking too late. I have to try to stop. Uh, legal obligation. It's called duty of care. So one point that you made was um, just now about having symmetric, um, I guess have, having a nice symmetry and that could lead to a lot more grid -alogs. Is there advantages of maybe not having symmetry and say having either actors thinking differently? I, I don't know, if, I don't know if that makes sense. At least just- If you, uh, I don't know if I understand the question. If I could obviously make the initial condition less symmetric, right? In which case they may not grid work, right? The, the less, the less symmetric this is, the less likely they have to be able. You are probably asking, what if they are running different algorithm inside, not the same algorithm? Here is my question. You want to make some of these aggressive and some of these mild. And you buy, I'm, I'm offering you to buy the vehicle. And you say, but this vehicle is mild, but it's always going to go second or third through the intersection. It's not going to be assertive. You're going to be late, come later than the guy who buy this vehicle, which one do you, do you buy? Well, they are both safe. <laughs> well, I think our problem is if I say uh, I, I have a vehicle that is always gonna go second or third or whatever, last to the intersection, no one is gonna want the vehicle. I don't want the vehicle, right? I just, I just don't, it's that simple, right? I give me some one that is fair to me and everyone else. What does it mean fair? It means <laughs> they're quite symmetric. So, I mean, to my mind, I don't know. Usually you have settings, right? You have uh, aggressive, normal, mild. Who is gonna set it on mild all, and keep it there all the time? I don't think anyone will. If, if it means you know, being last, whatever. I think those who have questions, maybe we'll invite you up to the front and we can continue the conversation. Is there anything on the on the we can do one more on the see okay, the slides are recording me. I answered that uh, question. Okay. Okay. It is recorded. Okay, okay. cool. Thank you. All right, let's thank the speaker again and those who are not. Definitely didn't go the way the plan was laid out. Oh man, <laughs> I've been so busy. I know. Milena Medi. Oh, okay, oh Milena. Yeah. I oh, want. I'm just talking. Yeah. I know. At this point, yeah. My my pre defense is in November, so oh, no. I'm just gonna... yeah, say hi to her. Yeah, I will. I will. It's great to meet you. It was very interesting talk. Um, yeah. So I haven't seen this absolutely this mod one of the GoPro. I'm so I do know I have like all of April for so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's gonna in a good way.
No, I didn't sound like it. It's really interesting. Um, I found it very helpful to have like random. Like, why would I, I want to do this? Now it's yeah. just like all the. I had free time and now I don't. <laughs> so. Uh, the idea is to, like, I, 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 I,